August 12th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Philippians chapter 4 from the New Testament. So then, my brothers and sisters, dear friends whom I long to see, my joy and crown stand in the Lord in this way, my dear friends. I appeal to you, Odia, and to Syntyche, to agree in the Lord. Yes, I say also to you, true companion, help them. They have struggled together in the gospel ministry along with me and Clement and my other co-workers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let everyone see your gentleness. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. Instead, in every situation, through prayer and petition with thanksgiving, tell your request to God. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is worthy of respect, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if something is excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. And what you learned and received and heard and saw in me, do these things. And the God of peace will be with you. I have great joy in the Lord because now at last you have again expressed your concern for me. Now I know you were concerned before but had no opportunity to do anything. I am not saying this because I am in need for I have learned to be content in any circumstance. I have experienced times of need and times of abundance. In any and every circumstance I have learned the secret of contentment. Whether I go satisfied or hungry have plenty or nothing. I am able to do all things through the one who strengthens me. Nevertheless, you did well to share with me in my trouble. And as you Philippians know at the beginning of my gospel ministry, when I left Macedonia, no church shared with me in this manner of giving and receiving except you alone. For even in Thessalonica, on more than one occasion, you sent something for my need. I do not say this because I am seeking a gift Rather, I seek the credit that abounds to your account, for I have received everything, and I have plenty. I have all I need, because I have received from Epaphroditus what you sent, a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice, very pleasing to God. And my God will supply your every need according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. May glory be given to God our Father forever and ever. Amen. Give greetings to all the saints in Christ Jesus. The brothers with me here send greetings. All the saints greet you, especially those who belong to Caesar's household. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. God, I've always loved these verses that Paul is speaking in this letter. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let everyone see your gentleness. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. Instead, in every situation, through prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, tell your request to God. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And I've always loved these verses. Um, they're very soothing. They're very compassionate. Um, they're encouraging. But I think... I've never truly understood what they mean until this year and some of the things that have been put in my life and how I've had to deal with them and how you have taught me things in those various situations that my happiness, that my joy in life can't be based upon situations, that my relationship, if it is deep rooted, if I am passionately in love with you, God, then my contentment and acknowledgement of trust and faith in you, that you will take care of every situation and always have my best interest at heart, if I am content in that relationship with you, then I can always hold on to that through any situation that comes along. There's no situation that could ever come along that should be able to shake that foundation that I have with you that my trust and faith should be so deep that I should be able to, with you, of course, <laughs> overcome anything in this life. 
And I should be able to rejoice in every situation. Because even if to the world it's a sad situation or a bad situation or a hurtful situation, that my underlying current, my basis for my entire faith, my relationship with you is so filled with that knowledge that you will take care of me in that situation, in every situation, that as I pray to you and I talk to you and I learn from those situations, that my emotional attachment to the worldly situation should become less and less and I should be more and more contented with you and our relationship and that acknowledgement of what you want for me. It's amazing because Paul goes on to say kind of a follow-up to it is finally brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is worthy of respect, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, If something is excellent or praiseworthy, think about those things. Those are all things that are you, God. (laughs) Those are all facets of you. I know you have a million other facets, but those are all facets of you. So if we're going through a valley um, in the shadow of death, if we're going through something that we consider painful, hurtful, um, filled with rage, jealousy, anger, uh, betrayal, all of those different things, Paul says, don't think about those things. They are worldly things. They are passing things. Because your underlying contentment should always still be there. Your underlying acknowledgement that God will take you through this situation and will always do what is best for you. If what is best for you is to end up in heaven with him at the end of the situation, then that is what is best for you. If your situation is to, the best situation is for you to have this thorn for the rest of your life, like Paul did, then that is the best situation. And if the best situation for me is for you to take away whatever is is hurting me or is painful, God, then you did that because that was the best. You will always do what is best for me. And I know we have such a hard time grasping that concept. Because it's not what we do for other people. We put our needs first before other people. But you say no. I want you to think about these things. I want you to think about the good things of this world. Because the good things are me. And you already have a level of relationship. A building block. I am your cornerstone Janelle. (laughs) I am your building block. For everything else. And how you should handle situations. So how in the world can you not rejoice? This has been a hard lesson to learn, God. A valuable one. A very valuable one. But a very hard lesson to learn. To be on my knees when things in my life has got, have gotten so dark last year and this year. And I thought I honestly wasn't going to make it till the next morning. And to bring all of those things to the forefront of my mind, what is true, what is really true in that situation, because most of the things of this world aren't true. What is true? What is worthy of my respect? What is worthy of my honor? What is worthy of my thinking? Whatever is just, and not justice like this world, but justice of you, God. What is it, whatever is pure, because that's one of the things you want for us is purity. Whatever is lovely and commendable, whatever is praiseworthy. And so as I am hurting and I move my attention to our relationship, God, into that acknowledgement of my faith in you, my trust in you, and these, these particular thoughts, how can I not rejoice in that situation to know that you are near, that you are right there gently helping me through those situations, teaching me what I need, guiding me through, healing my heart how can I not have trust and faith in a situation where I get to rejoice that I serve a sovereign God I serve a God who's in control of everything I serve a God who never for a single second in the entire universe has wanted something bad for me that's amazing God And I thank you through all of this, that you are who you are, that you are sovereign, 
that you reign supreme throughout the entire worlds of worlds that we don't even know about. And yet you are near to us. You are right here holding our right hand, walking through all of these situations with us. Please, God, please bring this verse to our mind anytime we are going through something worldly that we think is bad. If we're being attacked by Satan uh, through gossip and vindictiveness, if somebody has betrayed us or hurt us or pained us or lied to us, if we've lost a job, we're having a hard time paying bills, if, if one of our kids is sick, there's so many things that can happen. Turn our eyes Turn our hearts to you, God, to what we know is true, to what we know is pure, which is your acknowledgement of what is best for us. Thank you, God, for this amazing contentment and peace in my heart. As Paul said, a peace that passes all understanding of anyone who doesn't have that incredible peace from you, God. I so wish it for everyone. Thank you. In your son's name I pray. Amen.